On December 14, 1903, on the sandy dunes of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, the Wright brothers, Wilbur and Orville, were about to make history. On that sunny day, the brothers finished their last adjustments on their aircraft, the Wright Flyer. Wilbur pulled a coin from his pocket, heads or tails. The coin spun through the air, and fate decided Wilbur would take the first flight. The coin landed in Wilbur's favor, deciding the order in which they would attempt to fly. Wilbur won the coin toss, but his initial flight on December 14, 1903 was unsuccessful. During takeoff, he oversteered with the elevator, causing the flyer to climb too steeply and then stall. It crashed into the sand, covering a mere 18 inches in distance and lasting only 3.5 seconds. Fortunately, Wilbur was unharmed and the flyer was repaired within three days. After Wilbur's unsuccessful attempt, it was Orville's turn. On December 17, 1903, Orville piloted the flyer successfully, achieving the first powered controlled flight in history. The flyer flew four times that day, totaling 98 seconds of flight time. Orville's flight was a pivotal moment in aviation history, and so Orville became the first brother airborne, forever etching their names into the annals of flight. The coin flip is so important that it has been used to determine various outcomes throughout history. For instance, a coin flip decided who would get the last plane seat for the tour of rock star Buddy Holly, which tragically crashed and left no survivors in 1959, the winner of the European Championship semi-final soccer match between Italy and the Soviet Union, an event Italy went on to win. In 1968, which of two companies would be awarded a public project in Toronto in 2003, and even to break ties in local political elections in the Philippines in both 2004 and 2013. We all know that flipping a coin is supposed to give you a 50-50 chance of landing heads or tails, right? Well, it turns out that might not be entirely true. Recent research has shown that coin flips aren't as random as we once thought. Let's dive into the science behind it. By the end of this video, you've got a 1% higher chance of winning your decision. This video is about the hidden bias of coin flips. Um, the idea of a fair coin flip is deeply ingrained in our culture. It has been a go-to method for making fair decisions for ages. In fact, it was already considered a game of chance, capita ot navia, heads or ships, during the Roman era. From settling friendly bets to deciding sports game openings and breaking election ties, we rely on the 50-50 nature of a coin toss. But why do we think this is fair? Well, the answer lies in the physics of coin flipping. When you flip a coin, several factors come into play. First, consider the initial position of the coin, how you hold it before flipping. Next, the force applied to the coin matters. This depends on the strength and direction of your thumb flick. Air resistance affects how the coin moves through the air, while surface interaction determines how it bounces and rolls upon landing. Real-world coins are not perfectly uniform in weight distribution, and tiny variations can influence how the coin rotates during the flip. For instance, a slightly heavier side may cause the coin to land with that side down more often. Additionally, even seemingly smooth coins have microscopic imperfections on their surfaces. These imperfections interact with the air during the flip, subtly altering the coin's trajectory. While all these variables introduce unpredictability, it doesn't necessarily mean the process is fair. A study delved into the physics of coin flipping, revealing some surprising insights. So how biased is a typical coin flip? Researchers from Stanford University conducted a study on this very topic. In a 2007 paper, Stanford University statistician Percy Diaconis and his colleagues predicted a same-side bias of 51%. Diaconis asserts that coin tossing is physics, not random. From the moment a coin is launched into the air, its entire trajectory, whether it lands heads or tails, can be calculated using the laws of mechanics. Interestingly, airborne coins don't rotate around their symmetrical axis. Instead, they tend to wobble off-center, spending a bit more time aloft with their initial up side on top. In other words, a coin is more likely to land on the same side it started on. 
Diaconus also highlights spring-loaded coin tossing machines. These machines can be precisely adjusted to ensure that a coin starting heads up consistently lands that way. When the spring releases and the coin flips, it acquires a natural spin. Careful adjustments allow for precise landing points. Essentially, naturally tossed coins follow the laws of mechanics, and their flight is determined by their initial conditions. While this bias isn't substantial, it exists. If a coin starts heads up, it's slightly more likely to land heads up. The chances aren't a perfect 50-50, they lean more toward 51 to 49. However, proving this tiny bias would require hundreds of thousands of meticulously recorded coin flips. In 2023, František Bartosz, a PhD candidate studying research methods in psychology at the University of Amsterdam, took up this challenge. Initially, he struggled to find enough volunteers. Apparently, nobody was keen on spending weekends flipping coins. However, after starting his PhD studies, he recruited 47 volunteers from six countries. Over multiple weekends, including a 12-hour marathon session, the team performed an impressive 350,757 coin tosses, surpassing the previous record of 40,000. The results? The flip coins landed with the same side facing upward as before the toss, 50.8% of the time. With such a large data set, statisticians confidently conclude that the nearly 1% bias isn't a fluke. Bartosz says, We can be quite sure there is a bias in coin flips after this data set. For everyday decisions, though, coin tosses remain practically random. A 1% bias isn't noticeable with just a few flips. Statistician Amelia McNamara from the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota, who wasn't involved in the research, agrees. She says, this is great empirical evidence backing that up. But why does this happen? To understand this, we need to know how a coin rotates when it flips. According to Stanford mathematician and magician Percy Diaconis, it's all about the physics of the flip. When you flip a coin, it doesn't just spin perfectly on a single axis. Instead, it wobbles, introducing a slight asymmetry in its motion. This wobble means the coin's starting side spends a fractionally longer time facing up during the flip, causing a subtle bias. When a coin flips through the air, it experiences both rotational and translational motion. Initially, the coin spins around its horizontal axis, but the spin isn't perfectly symmetrical due to small imperfections in the coin and variations in the flip. This results in the coin wobbling off-center, a motion similar to the precession of a gyroscope. As the coin rises and falls, it maintains its angular momentum, but the distribution of this momentum changes due to air resistance and other factors. This interaction of angular momentum with gravitational force and air resistance causes the coin to tilt and wobble. Consequently, the coin spends slightly more time with its initial up side facing up, introducing a minor bias in the landing outcome. Though this effect is minuscule, it can tip the odds in favor of the starting side. This less than 1% difference might seem trivial, but in the world of probability and large numbers, it becomes quite significant. Considering how often we rely on coin flips for decision making, this finding has notable implications. Researchers use Monte Carlo simulations to explore coin flip biases. Here's how it works. Imagine a computer program that simulates coin flips. It considers factors like initial force, angle, and starting position. By repeating these simulated flips thousands or even millions of times, we can build statistical insights. The simulations reveal patterns. We can quantify how often the coin lands heads up versus tails up. If there's a significant deviation from 50%, we've detected bias. Theoretically, a perfectly fair coin is possible. Imagine a frictionless, perfectly symmetrical coin with a uniform weight distribution. In practice, though, it's elusive. Coins are minted, not crafted with divine precision. Even minor imperfections, tiny dents, variations in thickness, can tip the balance. Our coin flips aren't robotic. We introduce randomness, sometimes unintentionally. The initial force, angle, and even the height of the toss matter. Monte Carlo simulations help us understand how these imperfections and variations influence the outcome of a coin flip. By accounting for these factors and running numerous simulations, researchers can identify and quantify any inherent biases in the flipping process. This method provides a comprehensive way to analyze the fairness of a coin flip beyond theoretical calculations. 
offering practical insights into real-world scenarios. Why do we trust coin flips so much, despite their biases? The answer lies in psychology. Coin flips offer a sense of fairness and impartiality, making them a popular tool for resolving disputes and making decisions. Even when we know about the biases, the simplicity and clarity of a coin flip make it a preferred choice. The coin flip creates an illusion of fairness because it removes personal bias from the decision-making process. When both parties agree to a coin flip, they accept the outcome as fair, even if the process isn't perfectly balanced. This psychological acceptance is a powerful reason why coin flips remain popular. Moreover, the act of flipping a coin is quick, straightforward, and easily understood by everyone. It provides an immediate and definitive resolution, which can be particularly appealing in situations where a decision needs to be made quickly. The randomness of a coin flip also adds a level of excitement and suspense, which can make the process more engaging. In essence, the psychological comfort and perceived impartiality offered, offered by coin flips outweigh the minor biases inherent in the process, ensuring their continued use in decision-making and dispute resolution. Given this slight bias, how might it affect situations where fairness is crucial? In legal decisions, sports, or high-stakes business deals, even a marginal bias can be significant. It's also worth comparing coin flips to other randomization methods. Dice rolls, for example, are another popular method. They too can have biases due to imperfections, but the dynamics are different. Random number generators, especially those based on physical processes, strive for true randomness, but come with their own sets of challenges and potential biases. In conclusion, while the physics of coin flips reveal a slight bias, the cultural and psychological weight they carry ensures their continued use in decision-making processes. Understanding these biases not only deepens our appreciation for this simple tool, but also encourages a more nuanced approach to randomness in our daily lives. There you have it, the hidden biases of coin flips unveiled. While the myth of a perfect 50-50 coin flip has been debunked, we can still appreciate the simplicity and utility of this age-old practice. Understanding the biases helps us make more informed decisions and reminds us of the fascinating complexities underlying seemingly simple phenomena. As Percy Diaconis says, coin tossing is physics, not random. So if you're asked to bet on a coin, why not give yourself that 1% bias? As William Paul Thurston said, mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It is about understanding.